Hi everyone, you're probably wondering why I'm in a random building, and that is because with the filmmaking classes that I've been teaching, the smartphone filmmaking classes, teaching Film It Pro as well, we actually have access with the company I work for to a repurposed fire station. Now with this in mind, I really loved a lot of the locations within this building, so I want to show you lots of tips and techniques that can turn a rundown location into something that has a real film look, that real film quality that we're looking for on our smartphone films. Let's get into it. So the first way we're going to add a real film look to your rundown location like this is instead of starting on this location, which starts quite nicely, there's a lot of colours on the beams and stuff, we're actually going to pull out of this and as I step back you'll see there's an entrance that creates a frame within a frame. And if I pull back even further, you'll see that there's a frame within a frame within a frame. So that way you can create a nice entrance for a character. So you can have this shot here starting with the frame within a frame. And then as you push forward, seeing those beams on each side and the frames passing by the camera creates a sense of depth. So that way you can go straight past these and almost move with the audience into the world of the character. So use this technique, frame within a frame or frame within a frame within a frame, to create more intrigue for the audience and to create a sense of depth as well. So next up, and apologies about the air vent in here, we can see there's a mirror here. Now this would be a nice shot on its own, so if someone's here looking at the mirror, you can have something really nice that way, or you can turn the camera into the mirror so you're seeing the reflection of the person's face. So if I turn the camera now to more this angle, so we're gonna see side on, I remember you don't wanna get that phone in the mirror, and we can bring it even closer, now having a shot like this with the camera angled into the mirror like this is a really great way to then give yourself different options when filming and how to shoot a scene. So for example, I could be talking to myself in the mirror, I could be talking to someone behind me in the toilet, which you can see in the reflection. Maybe it's just a moment of reflection, so you can have that literally the reflection of the face and then reflecting on their own kind of conflict, inner conflict. There's a number of ways that you can use reflections and mirrors are great for that. Finding a location that really matches your film, especially if it is low budget, is really important. So for example, if I was making a film that was about a really grimy, rundown place, this would be perfect. So put loads of effort into your location scouting because that's gonna be a huge character within the film and take the audience on a journey of wherever you want to go within that story. Now imagine that character just heard a sound that startled him. He could just turn around and you cut to a shot of the window where it's coming from outside or you could add some movement to it to give it more of a film look, to make it more interesting and dynamic. So, let's say you've got the character here, he's looking in the mirror, he's heard the sound, he turns around, and instead of just a cut shot to the window, you actually move with the character. So as he turns and looks up, the camera looks up with him, keeping him slightly in shot so you can see that he's still part of the scene, he's very much part of it. But then you have the sound coming from the window. You can always bring it back down to him as well, he comes into focus, he looks back into the mirror, and then maybe he walks off. So adding movement to the simplest of shots can give you a nice film look. Happy accidents are a great way to give yourself the film look when you're making a project. So happy accident is basically when you get to say, get to a location and something by chance is happening that's really good for your film that you could never have planned in a million years, but it's there and it's happening. Now, when I was teaching here earlier on, this hand dryer was actually turned on. So when I backed into it, it made me jump because it turned on. So you could use that for a horror film or something like that. That could make you jump, as that legitimately made me jump because it didn't work on the first few times. But happy accidents are really good to use as well in your films to give you a film look and a film feel as well. Whew, I had a heart attack there. Now what's great to use in a rundown location to make sure that you're getting a really nice good film look is to use leading lines. So you can see here with the shelving we've got on the right hand side, with the walls we've got on the left, we're actually creating an arrow leading lines of which we want the audience to follow with their eyes. So it creates a sense of depth as well. And if you've got a character walking right past down here, these signs on the right and on my left create a really nice sense of depth and you can see that the distance they're traveling is emphasized by the leading lines. So it's a really great way to give yourself something that's more of a film look in a rundown place and it gets the audience's mind on the story rather than how rundown everything is unless of course it is part of the story. Now if you look at these sort of walkways that are above the ground level here with the railings there you can make them look a lot higher than they actually are. These are only about one floor high but if you get closer to them if I was taking a couple of steps in and then looking up you can actually emphasize how high they are and make them look higher than they probably are as well. So instead of having a shot from back here where it looks quite high up, the closer you actually get to that subject and look up, the higher it looks, you have to angle your phone higher 
which makes the audience look higher. So think about these things as well to accentuate the height of subjects in a rough location. Now again, looking at simple shots, this stairwell could look really good as it is, but you can also add movement to these shots. So if someone's walking up these stairs, for example, you could have the stairs passing by the camera as you're moving the camera with a tracking shot so the beams of this staircase actually run past the camera lens. That way you're creating A, a sense of depth, and B, more intrigue. And also, if you've got someone walking there, you can make sure you've got extra shallow depth of field by having them quite close to the rails as well. Now looking at this shot, it looks quite nice. We've got the nice yellow beams, which create almost like a leading line effect. The angles are pretty nice on here and it looks aesthetically very pleasing. But there is a way to make it look much better and to add a shallow depth of field. So if you get an object like this, put that into the corner of the frame, change that focus so it's all on that shallow depth of field object, and that creates the blurred effect in the background so it creates more of an interesting look. With this bit here, you can see that actually it's nice and clear and the background, whatever's happening, feels more mysterious, it feels more intriguing to the audience. So we're creating all of this mystery and we're keeping the interest on the shallow depth of field. Now, if you've got a rundown location, shots like this can really up the ante and make you feel like you've got something much more high budget and giving it much more of a film look. If there's one thing more I like than a frame within a frame, then it's a frame within 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 a frame. Now, with this fence here, we can create a shallow depth of field or we can set the focus at the distance, come back and have that blurred out and in the background actually in focus. So you can create some nice moments, maybe someone walks out of these doors, that kind of thing, and it looks a bit more suspicious. Maybe you've got that kind of edgy look, a bit more movement, so someone's looking in at the person. You can create a lot of things just with your environment, even if it is a rundown environment. So think about how you use the subject and your environment around you to create really cool shots like that. Or maybe you've got gaps in the fencing and in your environment as well that you can look through to create more of a mysterious look. So get that lens in between the fence and the concrete pillar here at the bottom. Change that focus if you want. Use the wheel if that's tricky and then bring that focus to you if you're away from you, so it's a deep depth of field to where that doorway is in the background, or you can bring the nice shallow depth of field here so you can see the horrible, horrible dust. Now, when I see a open window and doorway next to each other like this, that only means one thing, an interesting and unique shot time. Now, you can even have a shot like this looking out the window from the darkness, maybe someone's walking past, maybe someone stops, looks in for some reason. Create whatever you want with your environment, and that's the main thing about low budget filmmaking in rundown environments, you can still make them look really film-like by creating in the most imaginative ways possible. Leakage, puddles, water, that kind of stuff creates amazing reflections on an image and it can create a really great look for your film and a moment for your film, whether it's revealing someone, an action, someone walking by, all these kind of things. You can even pan for someone walking along this corridor and then tilt down towards the puddles, revealing something that's in the water that's key to your story. Really, really fun thing to play with is reflections and in puddles as well, you can create something really nice and create a nice film look. My next tip is actually to shoot in 4K, so no matter what location you are in, especially if it is a run-down, low-budget location, if you're filming in 4K, which you can see at the bottom of my screen here, you'll be able to crop into different areas and different things in post-production to give you more of a film look. So for example, in this shot, I could take this shot as it is in 4K, and then in post-production to create a dynamic zoom so that I can go straight in, zoom in towards that fire exit to create a bit of drama, a bit more panic. So if you think about how you're filming and what resolution you're filming as well, especially if you're making a professional looking film, you can create something really nice just by filming in 4K. Also, if you're in a rundown situation, you can also film whatever's moving around. This is kind of gross, but you can create some ugh, shots of something like this. And with the spider web there as well, you can just see it crawling slightly out of view there, it looks really creepy. You could do a little focus pull as well, so you could have maybe the web in focus there, and then slowly bring the attention to the spider as well. Now, frosted glass is a fantastic tool to use in low budget filmmaking and to give a run down location a real film look. You could have someone running to that glass, maybe it's some kind of horror film where someone's running up to it, smashing into the glass to get through the door. Perhaps you've got a hand right on that door sliding down like in a sort of horror effect. Maybe it is just a drama and someone's walking up to the store, you just don't need to know who that person is yet to create an effect. So frosted glass, if you see this in the location as well, make the most of these tools because they can really make something exciting in your film and give you a real film look. As the light starts to die down on your location, one way you can use windows and the light that's available to you is to create silhouettes. This is a really unique way to create something very, very interesting for a low budget film. And again, it makes the audience forget that they're watching something that's low budget. When you do a look up to your character in a silhouette, it creates something very, very mysterious, something very powerful that you wouldn't be able to create just with regular lighting. 
a really interesting technique. If you guys have your own low budget tips to turn something into a more of a film look location, then do let me know in the comments down below. I'll be really interested to see what techniques you guys use. I'm sure everyone else will be interested to learn from each other as well. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.